Well, good morning. Been a while. And I just thought I'd check in and see how you were doing. Give your word of advice. Yep. Well, my word of advice is this. If you ever go to a hospital to visit a friend, first make sure you go in through the front door. Second, make darn good well and sure they know you are just visiting. Let me tell you what happened. I had this friend, I will call him George. <coughs> George is a good name to have a friend. <coughs> he called me up. He says, you know what? I've got to go into the hospital. I've got to have a heart bypass. I'm headed there now. Well, George is a good friend of mine. And I told him, I says, well, George, I'm going to go to the hospital to be there with you. So I went on and I drove on up to that there Boise town where that St. Alphonsus Hospital is. And I went ahead and tried to get a parking lot. The first thing I found out is they got one of those hoop de doo roundy bout things that you drive into with a bunch of little signs. Well, I drove into the hospital and I got onto that roundabout thingy and I went around about 30 times before I could read all the signs on where to park. The problem was, every time I saw the sign that said pull off here, I was too close and then went on to the next one. Well, half an hour later, I managed to pull off at the one I thought it was right and Instead of being at the front door, I wound up being at the emergency room. And I thought, well, George is going to be in the emergency room before he goes up to his room, so I'll just meet him there. And I walked in, and I walked up to the lady, and I said, Hi, George. George Nielsen. And she looked at me, and she looked down at her records. She said, Oh, hello. We've been waiting for you. Here, sit down in this chair. Well, she brought out one of them wheelchair things that had the great big wheels on the back and the little big wheels on the front. Told me to sit down. It was about two sizes too big. It could have gone ahead and put a refrigerator in it. Well, I, I sat down and I thought, okay. She turned to me and she said, you just relax. We'll take you right back to where you need to be. And I thought, well, if they're going to be this nice to the people that are visiting, George is in good hands. Well, she wheeled me back into a room, and there was nobody in the room, and she handed me one of them, their hospital gowns, and she said, you need to go ahead and take your clothes off and put this on. And I said, oh, wait a minute. I I'm just here for a short time. She looked at me, she said, oh, she said, everybody's got to do it. She said, you just rely on me, and don't worry about things. She just said, take your clothes off, put your clothes in that little bag over there, and then put on the gown, ties in the back. We'll be right in. Well, I thought maybe because he was a heart patient that it was a little bit different and people that visited him had to be what do they call bacteria free and sterile. So I did what she asked and put all my clothes, my belongings and my wallet and whatnot in that little bag and sat on the edge of the bed and she walked back in a little bit later and she said, Oh, y'all ready. She said, I tell you what, right now, we're going to put this little mask on your face. It's going to make you breathe better. I said, wait a minute. I don't, I don't need any air, no. I'm just here to see my friend George. She looked at me and she said, oh, it's all right. People get nervous and they just kind of try to back out at the last minute, but you got nothing to worry about. Then she went in and slapped that mask right on my face before I could say anything. Well, one way for that, and I was feeling pretty doggone good. I thought, wow, this is pretty nice. And then I, I started to feel a little bit sleepy. And I turned to her and I said, ma'am? Should I, should, 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 should I be this? That's the last thing I remember well. Next thing I knew, I woke up and I was in this hospital room. There was a nice gentleman sitting in the bed next to me. He was laying there sucking on his oxygen mask and I had mine on. And I, I woke up and took mine off and 
I, I saw the nurse's button. I said, I got to get out of here. But my clothes were gone. I didn't know what to do. And I rang the buzzer for the nurse, and she comes in, and she says, Oh, George, you're all up and ready. Now we're ready to take you down to surgery. Wait a minute. I'm, I'm not George. I'm not George. I just came to visit George. She patted my leg and said, Okay. That's what they all say. You got nothing to worry about. Now, you just put that mask mask on, you'll be fine. Turned on this little dial and threw the mask mask on my face before I could say nothing. And I smelled it, and it smelled pretty good. What strong was last time, but I, I was pretty happy, and so I just kind of laid back, and I thought, well, i got to get my clothes before I get out of here. I looked down at my arm, and it had one of them intravenous things, and there was stuff that was just poured into my body, and I realized, well, my bladder was fuller than a pig on Christmas. Well, I called the nurse back in. I said, I gotta get out of this place. I gotta go urinate. She looked at me. She handed me this little thing that looked like an iced tea jug. She said, no worries. She just... You just go ahead and pee right in there, and I'll go ahead and empty it out. We've got to make sure that what's going in is coming out. Uh, Ma'am, I'm just here to see George. She glared at me. Got this little nursey grin on her face. She says, oh, George, that's so cute. She says, lots of men name their little down under parts. And so you got George and me, George. Oh, wait a minute, there's not that many. She just laughed. Well, I waited till she left. And I got that IV there pole and I unplugged it and went to the bathroom. Peed like a Russian racehorse. I came back in, sat down on the bed, and I, I asked the gentleman next to me, she says, where do they put your clothes? I got to get out of here. He had his mask on. He said, I said, what? He goes, I said, Mr. You're going to have to take that mask off. Talk to me because I can't understand one word you're saying. He pulled the mask off. He says, that's the beauty of it. Nurses can't understand either. Watch this. He went ahead and put his mask back on and rang his nurse's button and I just kind of sat there not knowing what to do. And nurse walked in. He goes, hey, nurse, my testicles black. The nurse looked at him because, What did you say? No, I'm not really here for that kind of thing. You're just here for, for lung issue. You should be fine. Well, the guy next to me again goes, hey, my testicles black. The nurse looked at him and said, Well, I, I can't see why they would be black. I, I, I'm not sure I should do this. The guy kind of turned his head to me and he winked one more time. He said, I'm black. Well, what could the nurse do? She looked over at me and she smiled and she said, well, all right, I'll check. Pulled down his sheets, reached in with her hands, fondled him on his manhood, and then put the sheets back and said, Fred, your testicles are not black. They are fine. She turned, she walked out of the room, and I heard him chuckling, and he pulled his mask off, and he, he rang the bell, and the nurse walked back in, and he said, <laughs> Nurse, listen to me carefully. Are my test results back? Well, right then and there, I knew I had to get me some of them oxygen masks and do the same thing, so I went ahead and put mine back on. Well, rang the buzzer, the nurse walked in, we're a different nurse. I said, who are you? She looked at me and says, well, it's shift change. I 
I'll be your nurse tonight. Wasn't complaining because cause she was kind of cute. Had one of them hourglass figures where most of the sand was at the top. <laughs> well, I went ahead and I looked at her and said, Man, I'm a national flag. She looked at me. She looked over at my roommate who acted like he was asleep. Looked back at me. She said, Well, I'll check. Let me go get some gloves. Turned around, she walked out of the room. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go. Oh, the next thing, this big old black guy comes in. He must have weighed 500 pounds. Had kind of a scruffy old goatee on his face. Had one that ears pierced in one side. He comes in. He looks at me. He says, Hey, George. I said, well, I was a Man, my roommate, he acted like he was still asleep. So the guy looks at me and says, All right. I'm going to check for you. Well, the last thing I remember was him taking out one of them plastic gloves and he put those plastic gloves on and it went snap right around his wrist. He got this weird looking smile on his face and he winked at me. Well, wasn't but about 10 minutes later that I was pulled over by the police officer. Police officer stopped me and he says, sir, you can't be doing that. And I said, well, yes I can. He said, no, sir, you can't be running down the freeway on the side of the road with your 60 year old butt cheeks flapping in the breeze. I explained to him what happened. He was laughing so hard. He says, buddy, I got to sit down in my squad car. Why don't you hop in the front and drive us both to your house? God awful truth. That's exactly what happened. If you ever go in the hospital, you best make sure you go in the front door, not the emergency room. Whatever you do, don't tell him your name is George.